Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on circular and satellite motion. The topic of this video is Kepler's Three Laws of Planetary Motion, and we want to know what are Kepler's Three Laws of Planetary Motion and what is their significance. I'm Mr. H. Let's get started. In the early 1600s, Johannes Kepler proposed three laws of planetary motion that summarized the carefully collected data of his mentor, Tycho Brahe. The three laws describe the motion of planets in a sun-centered solar system. The first law claims that planets orbit the sun in elliptical paths. The second law claims that an imaginary line that connects a planet and the sun would sweep out an equal area in an equal period of time. And the third law claims that the ratio of the period squared for any two planets planets is equal to the ratio of the average distance that those planets make with the Sun. I'll be talking about each of these laws in more detail. Kepler's first law is known as the Law of Ellipsis. It states that the path of the planets about the Sun is elliptical in nature, and the center of the Sun is located at one of the foci of the ellipse. To imagine an ellipse, suppose that you had a sheet of paper, a piece of cardboard, two tacks, a string that was tied into a loop, and a pencil. You take the tacks and you use them to secure the paper to the cardboard. Then you take the string and place it around the tacks, and the pencil, you pull the string tight in order to form a triangle as shown. Then you begin to draw out a shape using the pencil, keeping the string tight at all times, and drawing out a shape around those two tacks. The result would be an ellipse. An ellipse is a special type of curve in which the sum of the distances from every point on the curve to the two foci is a constant. An ellipse is described by its eccentricity value. The further apart that the two tack locations are, the more eccentric the ellipse is. As you begin to move those tack locations closer together, the eccentricity goes down, and if the tack locations are right on top of each other, the eccentricity is zero, and we have a circle. Kepler's second law is known as the law of equal areas, and it states that an imaginary line drawn from the center of a planet to the center of the sun would sweep out an equal area in an equal period of time. Here we see an animation of a planet orbiting the sun, and the entire period or time around the sun is divided into 12 equal time periods. The location of the planet at the end of each time period is shown, and the alignment of that imaginary line is shown as well. Once one orbits orbit is completed, the planet has swept out 12 areas that are done in equal periods of time. And according to Kepler's second law, these areas are equal. Now here it is, we see the ellipse shaded in in color, and I want you to look at the red area and the blue area. The red area was swept out when the planet was closest to the sun. And in order to sweep out an area there that is equal to the blue area, the planet must travel a longer distance along its orbital path in order to do so. So one corollary of Kepler's second law is that planets travel faster along their orbital paths when they're closest to the sun. The third law is known as the Law of Harmonies, and it states that the ratio of the period squared for any two planets is equal to the ratio of the cubes of their average distances of those planets to the Sun. If we were to take any two planets, let's just say Earth and Mars, and apply the law to those two planets, we could write the, the law as an equation that looks something like this. The ratio of the period squared to the radius cubed is the same. Now when we say radius here, we mean the average radius or average distance of the planet to the sun. Now I'm going to take this equation and rearrange it so that the two Earth variables are by themselves on one side of the equation and the two Mars variables on the other side. And the rearrangement would end up looking like this, and we would state that as the ratio of the period squared to radius cubed for Earth is equal to the ratio of the period squared to radius cubed for Mars. And if I were to take the data for the radius and the period for Earth and for Mars and do the math and find out what is the ratio of the period squared to radius cubed. I'd have it here in the last column and you'll notice it's the same for Earth as it is for Mars. Kepler's third law is the only law that compares one planet to another planet 
put another way, if there was only one planet in our solar system, there would still be a first law and still be a second law, but there couldn't be a third law because the third law compares one planet's orbital characteristics, its t squared r cubed ratio, to another planet's orbital characteristics, its t squared r cubed ratio. Here we see planetary data for all eight or nine planets. And we'll note that in the last column, when we take the t squared r cubed ratio for every planet, it's approximately the same. It's very close to the same, in fact. Now, the units here might be a little awkward for some of us. The unit on the distance or radius is called the astronomical unit. The astronomical unit, or AU, is simply the distance from Earth to Sun. And we use it as the standard by which we measure or express all other distances. And the unit on time is called Earth years. And we, when we say Earth years, we mean the time it takes in seconds for the Earth to orbit the Sun. And we measure the, the time of all the other planets' orbital periods in terms of of Earth years. In the end, when we look at the last column, no matter what units we use, we're going to have pretty much the same values for the ratio of t squared r cubed. Now, nearly a century later, Isaac Newton reasoned that the net force that acts upon an orbiting planet is the force of gravity. And as such, the expression for the net force, mv squared over r, can be set equal to the expression for the force of gravity between a planet and sun. That expression for force of gravity is big G times mass of planet times mass of sun divided by the average distance r squared. Now, we can set these two expressions for force equal to one another. Then we can take the expression for orbital speed, which is 2 pi r divided by period. We can square it and put it into the left side force expression. And when we do, we end up with this equation here. Now we can do some algebra on this equation, such as cancel the mass of the planet, since it's shown on both sides of the equation, and then group all of our r variables by themselves and t's on the same side of the equation. And when we've done all the proper algebraic steps, we have this equation which shows the t squared r cubed ratio, that magical planetary ratio, is equal to 4 pi squared divided by g divided by mass of the sun. Now, you should note that on the right side of the equation are three constants and the mass of the sun. There's nothing on the right side of that equation that is planetary dependent. On the left side of the equation, every planet would have a different t and a different r, but the ratio of t squared to r cubed is going to be equal to a numerical value value on the right side of the equation that is going to be the same for every planet. Thus, the t squared r cubed ratio is the same for every planet. Isaac Newton's derivation of this equation was based on the law of universal gravitation and as such should be universal in nature. In other words, it's not restricted to the planets of our solar system and the sun, but can be applied to any system of orbiting satellites around some central body. In such cases, the t squared r cubed ratio is equal to 4 pi squared divided by g divided by the mass of the central body. If we were to take the equation and apply it to the moons of Jupiter, we could say that the t squared r cubed ratio for every moon of Jupiter should be equal to 4 pi squared divided by g divided by the mass of Jupiter. Here's a table with four moons of Jupiter listed. We see the period, we see the average radius, and in the last column we see the t squared r cubed ratio. You'll note that that t squared r cubed ratio is the same for these four selected planets, four selected moons of Jupiter. And you should note that we could take these values for t squared r cubed and use it in the above equation equation to determine the mass of Jupiter, which is one reason why this equation is sometimes called the massing the planet equation, because we use the orbital period and orbital radius of the moons of a planet to determine the mass of that planet. Let's do one quick practice problem. Planet A and planet B are both orbiting the same star, and the orbital radius of planet A is five times that of planet B. The question here is how many times greater is the orbital period of planet A compared to planet B? This is a Kepler's third law question. We can use the Kepler's third law equation that states that the ratio of the period squared for any two planets equal the ratio of the radius cubed. I happen to know the ratio of the radius of A to the radius of B. I 
I was told that it was 5.0. So if I take this ratio of RA to RB and cube it, I have the right side of the equation known as 125. And that's equal to the ratio of the period squared for these two planets. Now, if I want to know the ratio of the periods, I need to take the square root of the left side of the equation and the square root of the right side of the equation. And when I do, I get the ratio of the periods of A to B is equal to the square root of 125, or 11.2. In other words, planet A has a period that is 11.2 times greater than the period of planet B. And that's the answer. It's at this time in every video that I like to help you out with an action plan, a series of next steps for making the learning stick. But before I help you out, could you help us out by giving us a like, subscribing to the channel, or leaving a question or comment in the comment section below. Now for your action plan. Here are three resources that you'll find on our website, and I've left links to each of these in the description section of this video. You have a Minds on Physics mission on Kepler's Laws. You have a calculator pad problem that has a problem and answer in an audio guided solution and finally a tutorial page whatever you do i wish you the best of luck i'm mr h and i thank you for watching